head. I suppose you know that's the sixth time you've buttered that same piece of toast. Better get it off your chest before you have to get it off your waistline. Oh, I was just reviewing my sins to see what I've ever done to deserve a boss like Mr. Honeywell. Then I suppose this is not a good time to mention an advance in my allowance. The old pirate's got a big deal on to finance a new motion picture company. He won't even let me have a smell of it. He wants to keep it all himself. Uh, what was that you said about your allowance? Oh, I, I just said this isn't a good time to mention it. I just gave you your allowance yesterday. Well, you see, this advance isn't exactly for me. It's for... No, this is definitely not a good time to mention who it's for. You and Freddy had a big conference in the den last night. Now, don't tell me that you're loaning money to that bubble brain boyfriend of yours. He is not a bubble brain. I'm just trying to help him out. He has to furnish a bond. Oh, he's in jail. How long is he in jail? Freddy is not in jail. The bond has something to do with his new job. He's going into business for himself. All he needs is $50 more. No. In one word of 50 and a dollar a word, the answer is no. Well, honey, I try to be a good father to you, reasonable and understanding, and there isn't much that I have the heart to deny you. But when it comes to that Freddie Wilson supporting him, I have the heart of an enraged lion. But, Dad... No, not one cent from me. If you want to invest in an overgrown juvenile delinquent, you can earn the money yourself. <laughs> I'll take care of it. Thank you. Goodbye. You sure my father isn't in? Positive. Why? Well, I want to see Mr. Honeywell without Dad knowing it. I'm going to ask him for a job. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Honeywell isn't in either. He's working on a big motion picture deal. If your father mentioned it. He sure did. But I've just got to see Mr. Honeywell. Uh, do you mind if I wait in his office? Well, there's someone in there already. Matter of fact, it's the star of the movie Mr. Honeywell's going to back. A movie star? May I take a peek? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> Won't you come in? You don't need an appointment to see Mr. Murphy. <laughs> Mr. Murphy? That's right. And I'm Tom Shane. I'm Margie Albright. Albright. Oh, yes, your father is a member of the firm Mr. Murphy has just taken over. <laughs> Hiya, Margie. Hi, Tom. Let me introduce you to Mr. Murphy. Mr. Murphy, may I present Miss Albright? How do you do, Mr. Murphy? <laughs> he likes you. And I want you to know Mr. Murphy is a fine judge of character, a very selective taste. He chooses only the nicest people. He's a darling. But tell me, what in the world is he doing here? He's going to star in the jungle picture Mr. Honeywell is back in. Oh, well, are you going to be in the picture, too? No, not me. <laughs> I'm just one of those bring him back alive guys. Found him in Africa when he was just a baby. <laughs> I thought Mr. Honeywell might be able to recommend a good place to keep Mr. Murphy for a couple of days. I have to go out of town to meet another shipment of animals for the picture. You shouldn't have any trouble finding a home for such a nice person as Mr. Murphy. Actually, a home would be just the thing. You see, I brought him up just like a human. He has a strict schedule, special diet, personal habit training. No, the ordinary trainer or zookeeper wouldn't do. So what am I going to do with you, boy? Mr. Murphy's got a solution, I see. <laughs> like to babysit for me till I get back. Don't think I wouldn't enjoy it. Not that money would interest you, but a little honest toy could earn you $50 a day over the weekend. $50 a day? And I'd be earning it, wouldn't I? Mr. Shane, you've just found a home for Mr. Murphy. <laughs> Good afternoon, Miss Albright. Hello, Charlie. Good afternoon, sir. Charlie, meet Mr. Murphy. Good afternoon, Mr. Murphy. Mr. Murphy's going to spend a few days with us. I'm babysitting for him. Oh. Well, here we are. Let's go in the living room. It'll be a little strange to him at first, but he'll get used to it. Stay right there. Now, you just make yourself at home, Mr. Murphy. Here, look at the pretty pictures. I hope he won't mind sleeping in the den. We don't have a spare bedroom. Any place you can make up a little bed for him? After all, he's only a baby. <laughs> How old did you 
say he was? A creep. He's a little advanced for his age, isn't he? Uh, rather. And Mr. Murphy and I share a taste for the beautiful things in life. Here, try popular mechanics. That's better for a growing boy. This is Mr. Murphy's schedule and diet. I'll send his things over from the hotel. His clothes and his little bicycle. He's crazy about that. Bicycle? Hey, will you ride me on the handlebars, Mr. Murphy? If you can tear yourself away from Mr. Murphy when I get back, I'd like to take you dancing. Mr. Murphy, you are one lucky dog. See you in a couple of days. Mr. Albright. Oh, couldn't find you, Charlie, so I ran it myself. I was on the service elevator. Ms. Albright sent me out for this. She says it's for Mr. Murphy. Thanks. Mr. Murphy? <laughs> He's a chimpanzee, but don't let him hear you call him that. He thinks he's human. What? Uh, I'll take these to the kitchen. Uh, Mr. Murphy? <laughs> oh, get away from me. Get away. Get away. Oh, 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 oh. It's all right to play with Mr. Murphy, but that poker is dangerous. Play with him? I'm just trying to keep from tearing me to pieces. Mr. Murphy must like you. After all, he's a great judge of character. Now you run along in the living room and play like a nice little boy while I talk to our daddy. <laughs> Isn't he an angel? An angel? No, but I darn near was. Now you tell me, what's that monkey doing in here? Shh, he'll hear you. I told you he was very sensitive. I'm taking care of him until his owner gets back. You told me to earn my own money, so I am. Fifty dollars a day. Oh, but Margie... It came just like manna from heaven. I met this young man at the office, and he didn't have anybody to board Mr. Murphy. Naturally, he couldn't put him in a zoo, because after all, he's almost human, more like his own brother. So when he offered me fifty dollars a day to keep him, I couldn't refuse it, could I? I don't believe a word of it, not one word. You're just, you're just trying to get square with me for what I said this morning. Oh. So you think I'm lying, do you? Well, I didn't say that exactly, but now that you did, yes. Very well, then. I won't tell you the rest. But just remember, whatever happens from now on is your fault. Nothing more to say. Oh, yes, there is. You think you can irritate me into giving Freddy that money. Well, we'll see who has the strongest will in this family. You may keep Mr. Murphy here as long as you like. I'll even help you monkey sit for him. If you have quite finished, shall I start you some dinner? Never mind. I'm going to bed. <laughs>
sleep with that gorilla in, in my bed? Why, I made up a bed for him in the den. He must have gotten lonely for you. Well, you should be flattered, Dad. Mr. Murphy is a great judge of character. Margie, I swear, if you don't get rid of that revolting anthropoid, Temper, I'll... Temper, uh... Temper, you told me last night I could keep him as long as I liked and that you'd even help me take care of him. What I said still goes, but, but you're not going to make a monkey out of me. Uh, I mean, I... Well, you go and fix breakfast while I, while I take my shower. <laughs> Why, Dad, you're all dressed. But you didn't shave, did you? Not yet. I'm waiting my turn. At the moment, our little guest is soloing with my electric razor. Oh, so that's why you got dressed first. Usually you have breakfast in your nice, fuzzy, terry cloth robe. Hmm. Not anymore. He shaved that, too. <laughs> Very funny. Very funny. Isn't he intelligent? He took that little horn off all by himself. You stay here, and I'll get you men your breakfast. bananas and cereal. Oh, don't eat too much of it. Save room for the banana fritters. No, I've done everything else you've asked me to do up until now, but I'll be darned if I'll eat like a monkey. <laughs> there, there, you see? I told you he doesn't like me. Oh, nonsense. He just doesn't like what you said. I told you he's sensitive. Oh, I beg your pardon. Forgive me, Mr. Murphy. I'm, I'm sorry that I called you an M-O-N-K-E-Y. <laughs> He must be a Harvard man. <laughs> Not yet, but he is very intelligent. And we must treat him exactly as a human being. <gasps> I forgot his vitamins. <laughs> Here, Dad, show him you like him by giving him his cod liver oil. Here, little man, let Daddy ram this spoon down your throat. Come on. Mr. Murphy! Hey, where are you? Mr. Murphy? Mr. Murphy, where are you? Hi, Margie. Want a ride? Mr. Murphy and I are really living it up, aren't we, kid? Well, how did you get in here, and, and why? Well, it was your father's idea, Margie. He offered me $50 to steal Mr. Murphy and hide him over at my place. Oh, so Dad's at it again. Let's teach Margie a lesson, is that it? I couldn't go through with it, Margie. I was ashamed because Mr. Murphy was so darn nice to me, and your father said that Mr. Murphy's a very fine judge of character. And besides, Margie, I got to thinking. I couldn't do anything to upset you, not even for $50. Oh, that's sweet, Freddy. And you won't lose the money because you're going through with Dad's little plot, rewritten slightly by his daughter. Oh, no, not another one of your ideas. Now, you take Mr. Murphy to your place, and when Dad sends for him, you tell him he got away. He's lost. I don't get it. 
Well, Dad doesn't know it, but Mr. Murphy is involved in Mr. Honeywell's big deal. And when they come for Mr. Murphy and Dad can't produce him, oh, boy, this is made to order. Okay. Come on, kid. Mr. Murphy, you're going home with Freddy for a while. <laughs> now, bring him over right after you make Dad think he's lost. Here's Dad. I've got to go now. <laughs> Margie, what's the matter? It's Mr. Murphy. He's gone. I just went out for a minute, and when I came back... <laughs> now, now. <laughs> Honey, control yourself. The world hasn't come to an end. Well, it has for me. Mr. Murphy's owner will sue me, and I haven't even got money for a lawyer. <laughs> you won't need a lawyer. Mr. Murphy will come back. You'll see. But his owner is coming back today. So I've hired several detective agencies to find him. Hired? Oh, no. Well, I know it's terribly expensive, but they said just because Mr. Murphy's a monkey is no sign they're going to work for peanuts. Well, call them off, you hear? I've invested all the money I'm going to in a silly ape. You hated Mr. Murphy, I knew it. And he knew it, too. That's why he ran away, because he's so sensitive. Mr. Murphy didn't run away. I mean, is, what I mean is, uh, he, he, he probably was stolen. Yes, yes, that's it. Stolen? But why? Only an idiot would steal a monkey. Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, that is, it, uh, it was probably the work of some gang. But don't worry, I have contacts with a shady character, a definite criminal type. Yes, I think I can almost guarantee Mr. Murphy's return. Oh, Dad, what would I do without you? Well, I trust in the future you'll listen to me, Margie. I know I'm not infallible, but I generally know what's best for you. I know. I'm a foolish, stupid girl. Well, let us just say that you've learned your lesson, shall we? Yes, let's just say that, for the time being. Uh, I'll get it. Hello. Oh, Mr. Honeywell. All right. I have the president of the branch productions here with me. And we just set the deal for that motion picture. You may have to handle some of the minor details. And I thought Mr. Branch ought to meet some of my staff before he leaves for Hollywood. Sir, your staff is always available. I'll be expecting you. A few minor details. He wouldn't give me a look-in on that movie deal, and now he's bringing that producer over here so he can show off. Mr. Honeywell's bringing him here? Well, I must change. Let's see, shall I wear something bright and gay or something black and funereal? I guess that depends on how the evening turns out, doesn't it? <laughs> I guess there's no use waiting any longer for Shane. We can leave word. Oh, sorry I missed the meeting, Mr. Branch, but my plane was delayed. Well, that's all right, Tom. We were just leaving to meet one of Mr. Honeywell's staff. You can come along if you like. Right. But first, I think I'd better pick up Mr. Murphy and get him settled. Meet us at Albright's apartment. It's in the Carton Arms. Well, that's where Mr. Murphy is. The Albrights took care of him while I was gone. What? Is he trying to horn in on my... Uh... I mean, that's the kind of a staff I have, Mr. Branch. All working for the good of the firm. Well, shall we go? Good evening, Mr. Honeywell. Won't you come in and join the excitement? Excitement? What excitement? It hasn't started yet. Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> May I come in, too? I'm a friend of Mr. Murphy's. Boy, oi, 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 oi. I've got to talk right. to you alone, Thank quick. You, How do you do, sir? Glad to know you, Mr. Albright. I'm in favor of ruling courtships, but I'm sure you didn't rush me in here to propose. <laughs> Tom, will you go along with the gag I'm playing on my father? I will, if you'll go along with your promise to go dancing with me. Well, as I see it, animal pictures will be box office as long as people like animals, which is more universal than people liking people. I think you'll agree after your experience with Mr. Murphy. Oh, I suppose Margie tipped you off about that. <laughs> she wanted to let you in on her idea of a good joke, but <laughs> the joke's on Margie. I personally got rid of Mr. Murphy, but good. <laughs> you what? <laughs> I had him taken while she was out. <laughs> had a fellow steal him. Now, how about that? <laughs> Yes, sir, I fixed it so that revolting little banana inhaler got lost in a hurry. <laughs> but but you're, you're not laughing. All right, you're an idiot. A double-deck 
triple-plated idiot. You had the star of my jungle picture stolen? Mr. Murphy? Yes, Mr. Murphy. A fine staff you've got, Honeywell. I hope you realize our deal's off if anything's happened to Mr. Murphy. Oh, oh, oh wait a minute, please. I, I didn't know that Mr. Honeywell was working with that other monkey. Oh, I mean, uh, I, I, uh, uh, there's nothing to worry about. I, I told you I hired someone to steal, to, 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 take, to take care of him. Why, I can get him back here in 10 minutes. So all I have to do is make a phone call. If he isn't back here quick, you better put in a call for an ambulance. And now Freddie will light the shortest fuse in the history of explosives. Hello? Gee, I'm glad you called, Mr. Albright. Mr. Murphy got away. He's gone. Did you say he's gone? Uh, oh, for, for Freddie, uh, are you sure? Have you looked every place? I've searched everywhere for him, Mr. Albright. He must have escaped while I was out getting him something to eat. Well, it won't do any good to go looking for Mr. Murphy now. He's already got a head start. Have you any other suggestion, Mr. Albright? Mr. Albright? Mr. Albright? Now, now, Mr. Honeywell, no violence. Let, 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 let's talk this over like gentlemen. Dad, <laughs> this is Tom Shane, the owner of Mr. Murphy, the missing movie star. You, it's all your fault. Why didn't you tell me about Mr. Murphy? Well, I tried to, but you wouldn't let me, remember? I think it's sort of tragic when a parent's so headstrong, don't you? Especially when he's got two heads. Don't try to pass the buck, Honeywell. He's your employee. It's your responsibility. I'm suing you. Now, wait, Mr. Bratz. Gentlemen, please. I think this has gone far enough. <laughs> You're a lamb to help out with a joke, but I don't want to get you into trouble. Then Mr. Murphy isn't lost? Of course not. In fact, I could put my finger on him right now. Will somebody please tell me what's going on around here? I'll explain after I produce Mr. Murphy. For now, shall we just say, quote, you've learned your lesson, unquote? Hello? Oh, Freddie, I was just going to call you to bring Mr. Murphy right over. I... What? We must have a bad connection. It sounded like you said he was gone. <laughs> you heard me, Sergeant. I want an all-points bulletin on Mr. Murphy. Dark complexion, brown eyes, height three feet six inches, weight 40 pounds. No, he's not a midget. He's a monkey. And now, young lady, I trust that you'll admit I was right in the first place, as I always am. You and your harebrained schemes. Well, young lady, you'll get out of this all by yourself this time. Mr. Albright, that's not fair. I'll decide what's fair in my family. I wash my hands of the whole mess, particularly your friend, Mr. Murphy. It's probably the police. I'll get it. Mr. Murphy came home. What? You mean that little monster came all the way back here alone? <laughs> <laughs> 